Well, let's take you live to the State House here in Accra, where the final funeral rites of Chief Nanause Brown, founder of Syndicated Capital, is happening. And strong in faith. That's Acts 11, verse 23 and 24. He was truly filled with the spirit of Barnabas and encouraged all who came into contact with him. He was not only a brother in faith, in the faith, but became like a family to many. Though many of us will see his departure as untimely death, in God's own appointed time, he has called his son home. Oh, death, what is your thing? For us in Christ, we have victory over death. Chief has only exchanged his earthly tent for a spiritual one. He has gone home in glory. Chief, you are a wonderful soul. You will be greatly missed. May your gentle and kind soul find internal peace in the bosom of the Almighty till we meet again. Rest in peace. When you for our Christ, they Amen. Thank you very much for the tribute from the church. The last set of tributes is from his sisters and brothers. That will be the last set of tributes from his sisters and brothers. Thank you. There are a number of tributes from the brothers and sisters, so we'll just read bits and pieces of it so that we don't take too much of your time. But this is my tribute to Chief, my brother. I have lost not just a brother, but a life companion. If there's anyone reading from the funeral brochure, I'm going to have to skip so that we don't take too long. So I'll be on the next page and then just read bits and pieces of it. When you called that Friday morning with so much zest in your voice, how was I to know that was going to be our last conversation? When some of your friends called me after your call, I told them they could call you directly because you were very fine and had your phone on you. Indeed, I would have had a very difficult time believing if an angel had whispered to me that it would be your last day. That was the final of the conspiracy of deceptions and I fell for them. I know you don't want me to continue to beat myself you rather want it to be another one of the lessons your life taught me. Jesus said that the last days will be marked with deceptions. And my experience has just triggered me to be more conscious of life in these last days. The thing about deception is that it is very deceptive. But I have promised myself that with God being my helper, I will never again be deceived by anyone or any circumstance. 
in spite of the many good you have done. I am not deceived into thinking that's how you earn a place with God. But I take consolation from what you shared a moment after you received communion on 8th January. You broke into uncontrollable tears for the first time ever and said, in this period that you have been, I have been sick, I have realized how much love all of you have shown me. There were days that I had up to 100 people visit me at home just to come check on how I was doing. I thank you all so much. I never realized until now how much impact I could have made for Christ. Those last words of regret, I never realized how much impact I could have made for Christ, bring me so much joy. I knew at that moment that you were truly making peace with your maker. The thief on the cross would have done much good if saved from that cross. He would have devoted the rest of his life being an evangelist and telling others about his encounter with Jesus. Like him, I know you two had a special encounter with Jesus that afternoon. But rather than heal you from your illness to continue here in this depraved world, he chose to save you from the agonies of this life so you could rest in the grave while you wait to be with him in paradise on the resurrection day. Now it all makes sense to me what Prisla heard you repeatedly say. The two days leading to your passing that fateful Saturday morning. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. May soul rest in peace and may his memory be a blessing.